This Christmas, you're invited. Sit, sir. Sit. Sweeney Todd, at your service. So is you. To step into the unique world of Tim Burton. The madness. A hole in the world like a great black pit, and the vermin of the world inhabited. The music. You, sir! It's man, devouring man, The movie event of the holiday season. Johnny Depp is Sweeney Todd. The years, no doubt, have changed me. Hello, I'm Richard Ridge, and welcome to the third installment of Sweeney Todd from Stage to Screen. On December 21st, the film version of Stephen Sondheim's landmark musical, Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, which is directed by Tim Burton, will open nationwide. It stars Johnny Depp as Sweeney Todd, the barber with a vengeance, and Helena Bonham Carter as his amorous accomplice, Mrs. Lovett, who makes the most diabolical meat pies. The original Broadway production, which was a multiple Tony Award winner, including Best Musical, starred Angela Lansbury and Len Cario. So enjoy our third installment of Sweeney Todd from stage to screen. Speak to me, friend. Whisper. I'll listen. I know, I know. You've been locked out of sight all these years Like me, my friend Well, I've come home To find you waiting Home And we're together It began in, I think, row Z of the then Eurus Theater. And I was in high school, in, living in New Jersey, and I'd come and see shows all the time. I just love theater. Uh, so I think I went to the Half Price Ticket booth. I saw the show Sweeney Todd. And so I said, well, let's take a chance. So I went there. I, I got the worst seats in the house, I swear to God. And I saw their final preview. The night before they opened, I saw Sweeney Todd. And it changed my life. It, I had never seen anything that thrilling on stage. And I distinctly remember the moment when Len Cariou performed Epiphany, which is the song where Sweeney essentially goes mad and starts taking his personal revenge to the rest of the world, or in this case, the rest of the audience. And he walks and he says, you, sir, how about a shave? And sitting in row Z of the Eurus Theater, I thought Len Cariou was going to leap from the stage and kill me. It was that frightening. And uh, it has stayed with me since then. All right, you, sir, how about a shave? Come and visit your good friend Sweeney. You, sir. To, sir. Welcome to the grave. I will have vengeance. I will have salvation. As I look back, it was it was first and foremost the score. I think it is it is one of the most complex, emotionally rich scores ever written for for the Broadway stage. It's operatic and yet it's personal. It's beautifully rendered and lyrical, and yet it's dissonant and frightening. It's, it's the King Lear of musical scores. It is that complex and that rewarding. And in the six years that I've been working on the movie, it has continued to reward me. There's never been a time where I've gotten sick of a song, or tired of a song, or bored of a song, or said, oh, I can't deal with pretty women again. It's constantly rewarding, and I'm discovering new things. And also, there's something about Sweeney Todd that at its heart, it's a popular melodrama. It's a penny dreadful. It's a grand guignol piece of theater. And it is just blood and thunder theater. So it's just thrilling to watch. And their subheading was a musical thriller. And uh, I just never see anything like it and, and, and have yet to see anything like it. It's priest, have a little priest. Is it really good? So it's too good, at least. Then again, they don't commit sins of the flesh. So it's pretty fresh. Awful lot of fat. Only where it's at. Haven't you got poet or something like that? Now you see the trouble with poet is how do you know it's deceased? Try the priest. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. It was a, it was a, it was a hard job. It was it was five years of really hard work because I have such respect for the Broadway musical. I wanted to try to capture the essence of that 
in a cinematic way. Uh, the first challenge is it runs almost three hours. And it's very presentational. So the lo language of Broadway, the language of theater, which can involve a chorus, speaking to the audience, a lot of recitative, um, choral singing, really don't necessarily apply to the language of cinema. Because movies, I think, are about this. I think they're about psychological reality, they're about close-ups, they're about following the emotional lives of the characters. They're very small in a way. So where on the Broadway stage you can have a performer scream at you, in movies you have to have them whisper to you because you're right, they're right next to you. So the process of working on it primarily was taking the majesty and sweep of Stephen Sondheim and Hugh Wheeler's Sweeney Todd and bringing it down into something smaller and more psychologically true for the camera. Nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. Nothing's gonna harm you, no sir, not while I'm around. What do you mean, someone bad? Demons are prowling everywhere nowadays. I mean, from, from our very first discussion, Steve Sondheim and I discussed the fact that we needed to bring the show down. It was, it was simply too long. And the first thing we discussed were cuts. So here's me going into Stephen Sondheim's living room, and the first thing I have to talk about is, here's the songs I want to cut from your great show. Here's the songs you labored years over writing that I, in a pen stroke, want to eliminate. To my shock, he was absolutely generous about about cutting songs, and he understands the process. He under, he, the last thing Stephen Sondheim wanted was a filmed recording of a stage play. He wanted this to become its own animal. He wanted a motion picture. And he was being, he's been very generous with his time and with his genius in terms of helping shape the, the screenplay. I, I am absolutely indebted to him for every piece of work I did because his DNA is on every frame of the movie of Sweeney Todd. Let me, let me rephrase that. Stephen Sondheim's DNA is on every frame of the movie Sweeney Todd. You're poking mad. Killing a man will done you no harm. You recognize me from the old days. Tried to blackmail me. Half me earnings. Oh, well, it's a different matter then. In all honesty, I can't imagine any other actor than Johnny Depp playing Sweeney Todd. Because the essence of Sweeney Todd is he is an obsessed man who becomes a murderer and yet you can never lose sympathy for him that is the key to Sweeney Todd if you lose sympathy for Sweeney Todd or if you're in any way alienated from the character the tragedy won't work but Johnny is so sympathetic and he brings such yearning and such emotion to to the role that you never for a second lose sympathy with that character and the way he can just move his eyes or suggest something with his face that breaks your heart is to me incredibly unique um, plus, it was a very brave performance to give. Johnny Depp's not a professional singer, and he stood up and sang the most complex and difficult male part probably in the, the late 20th century, and did it boldly and bravely and magnificently. So, so his willingness to do it shows to me a gambler spirit and just an artist's soul of, of wanting to, to try something, something new. Um, and I think it's important to say that, that Johnny Depp and, and Helena Bonham Carter Tim Burton, everyone, has such respect, first and foremost, for Stephen Sondheim. The reason we all did it is because we love that man and we love the work that he created. Tim and I had spoken about doing the film and, and he asked me, you know, do you, do you think you can do it? Do you think you can sing? And I didn't, I honestly, I mean, the answer that I gave him was, I don't know, you know, I'll try. I do, I definitely do my best. I'll, I'll see, if, you know, if I can. And... Johnny Depp works by talking talking the song through getting all the information he can about it and then he goes away and does it records it for you unless you listen to it which is quite fine because he can he comes up with what he's supposed to and he's and he's so you have to trust that process the the big difference between working with people on broadway and working with people in film is you have to trust their process it's totally different than what you're used to. It's totally private, you know. The, 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 the hardest thing about doing a musical for people like this, because it's a drama, 
is to give away their performance. What I mean by that is for them, for them to, for, 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 for uh, you to say, say to Johnny Depp, let's do that again. Let's do that song again. Let's do that. Let's work on this phrase. No, that's not what it's about. It's about who is he? How does this song fit in? Where does this go? Where is it going? How, how, what am I supposed to sound like? What does he sound like? He kept saying, I got to find what he sounds like. And he would go away and do this and let us hear it. And we'd go, that's it. Or, you know what? These notes are not quite right yet. Or blah, blah. So like that. That's his way of working. Helena was like any stage actress in, in a musical that you'd write. I mean, she couldn't get enough rehearsal. I think I work with her more than anybody else in terms of rehearsal time, talking about the songs, doing them in different keys, whatever, doing, doing what we have to do. That was more like a theater experience. But she never really settled on anything until she filmed. I mean, you, every day, in other words, the, the next day, we'd be someplace else. And we, it's not so you, that I had to learn not to back up. That was yesterday. This is today. This is tomorrow. This is what I'm trying today. I tried this two days ago. I'm not going back to that. I'm doing this. It's a different way of working because when they get in front of the camera, they don't want to lose the spontaneity. And adding music to, to a, a film immediately chops off some of the spontaneity because you can't go in and just ad-lib the song. So that's what they are nervous about. And that's my job basically was to make them comfortable about, don't worry about that, just learn the notes and do what you have to do. It's basically what I said. Mrs. Lovett, I wanted to be her since I was 11. And I went around apparently in Mrs. Lovett hairdos. Mum and Dad were big fans. And they brought back the score. And I remember on my sitting in my drawing room, looking at the score, going through the lyrics and listening to it on the record. And I just got completely hooked on the music. The years, no doubt, have changed me. It's a truly amazing cast. Helena Bonham Carter, Sasha Baron Cohen, and Alan Rickman. I'd watch this movie just to watch these guys. This is definitely one of my favorite characters. Seeing Johnny play a monster in a way is fantastic. Tim and I did our first movie together like 17 years ago. He knows me pretty much better than anyone. All right! You, sir, how about a shout? Come and visit your good friend, Sweeney. You just look at Johnny's body of work and you realize that this is a man who holds himself to the highest possible standards. His choices are always really clever, and he's always great fun to watch, and he's always having fun. Seems like the fates are favoring you at last, Mr. T. Now that I see Helena Bonham Carter playing Mrs. Lovett, I can't imagine anybody else playing it. Wait, what's your rush? What's your hurry? I saw Mrs. Lovett as totally amoral and somebody who was as zestful and vital as Sweeney was depressive and introverted. I think she'd rather he didn't think about killing so much. And the main thing that defines Miss Lovett is that she's tragically in love with somebody who doesn't love her back. Helena came in and whipped it beyond recognition. She's just beautifully made it her own. She's a real lady. That she is. Mr. Todd? At your service. Alan Rickman has always been one of my favorite actors. He's able to be bad, but he had a strange vulnerability about him as well. I look at him and you kind of don't really want to know what he's thinking. He doesn't know that he's got an appalling set of morals. He's a very successful judge, dishing out sentences to poor, presumably innocent young people. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. My character, Beadle Bamford, is a real nefarious, nasty piece of work, really. Oh, thank you, sir. You are a paragon of integrity. Well, I try to do my best for my friends and neighbors. He always likes to feel he is a pillar of the community, but in fact, he's completely venal, totally untrustworthy, and very, very violent. Next time, it'll be your pretty little brains all over the pavement. Mr. Todd. Signor Pirelli. Pirelli's the competing barber in town. He is a big comic character. And it's just hysterical, his Pirelli. <laughs> Toby starts off being Signor Pirelli's servant in a way, and he is not treated very well at all until he's sort of adopted by Miss Lovett. Ed Saunders started off about this tall, and now we're finishing the film and he's about that tall. You all right there? Leave the bottle. I'm playing Joanna, which is actually Sweeney Todd's daughter, but he hasn't seen her since she was one. Joanna, he has her locked in a madhouse. 
Anthony's character is very young. Although he's been to all these different places in the world, he's, he's still very naive. And I think he's just overwhelmed by Joanna's beauty. So we run away and then all our dreams come true. They had a, just a certain freshness to them that we felt was important to the, those characters. You know, all the other characters are screwed up and nuts. And it just felt like to balance against that, you just wanted a certain purity. These are desperate times, Mrs. Lovett. The desperate measures are called for. Every character has a sort of different agenda and a different passion. And there's something that's very funny and dark about all of that together. It's truly impressive. It's astonishing. Now's the tea. Surely one's enough for today. How about a shave? There'll be lots of people getting killed and loads of blood spraying all over the place. So if that's your thing, you're going to have plenty of it.